How are you? Good. I just walked in the door, so I haven't had any time to look at what you sent me, but it looks pretty straightforward. Yeah. I don't have much. I just have the, like, okay. I guess it's only like three problems. That's fine. Um, so right. our session might be a little short. That's fine. <laughs> Let's talk about directly proportional and inversely proportional. If I okay. say y is directly proportional to x, what does it mean? Um, y, or whatever y is, that's where you replace it with x. Don't forget the k. Okay. In other words, when I say this means y is directly proportional to x, and you can remember it by thinking that if x goes up, y goes up. If x goes down, y goes down. That's okay. direct. This is inverse. Those are the only two you have to remember. Okay? So, this problem says if x is inversely proportional to y, well, that means that. I found two equations because I can only see one. Can you see this one now? Yeah. The x equals k over y? Mm -hmm. All right. So that much I can write just from this sentence up to the comma. Mm -hmm. and you could replace x and y with anything. In other words, I could say the force of gravity is inversely proportional to the distance between the two objects. And that's true also. So it doesn't just apply to x's and y's. Okay, so the trick on all of these is to solve for k. Oh, okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so they say when x is 40, y is 24. So I got 40 equals k over 24. Solve for k. You get um, 9. You multiply both sides by 24. Uh -huh. So 960 equals k. And now you have a specific equation that covers this thing. Since k is 960 and it never changes, that is the equation that covers this problem. And all of these kind of problems are exactly this way. You have to solve for k first. Okay. okay. Now that you've solved for k and we have this equation, now you can plug in whatever you want. In other words, find y when x is 64. Well, I'm going to plug in 64 for x. I know k is 960. Why is that? So multiply both sides by y. Divide both sides by 64. That's what mm. y would be equal to when x is equal to 64. Okay. Um, divided by 64, that'd be 15. Okay. And that's the only problem on this page? Yeah. We did the other few of them last time. Okay. Yeah, I remember seeing that as the first problem. Okay, I didn't quite get the top of this. What's the instruction say here? Oh, sorry. The instructions say Solve. for questions 9 through 11. Did you get 11? Was no, that part of you it? Can verbalize. I'll just read it to you later. Yeah. Um, solve the equation for the given variable. Okay. All right. What's the first step? Um... So, sorry, I'm writing it down on a different piece of paper. Okay. Um, so the first step is to, uh, would you simplify? You always want to get rid of your denominators when you're solving right. an equation. And the first two steps of any equation are to get rid of denominators and get rid of the parentheses. 
Well, there aren't any parentheses here, but there is this denominator. So how do we get rid of it? By getting rid of it, I mean multiplying both sides by it. Right. Oh, so multiply both sides by 4 plus x. What's that give you on the left? That gives you 80. No, this 4 plus x cancels with that 4 plus x. Oh, right. That's why we do it. In other words, it's always going to cancel. So we're just left with okay. the numerator. Yeah. Equals what? 12 plus 3x. Okay. Uh, can you hold on one second? Yeah, no problem. Uh, that dog never barks. I'm curious as to what he barks. never know. Whatever he was barking at is no longer there. Okay, now what's the next? In other words, now I've gotten rid of all the denominators, and it's just a question of gathering like terms. And right, so terms you want to get... On one side, all the terms with the numbers on the other. Right, so subtract x from both sides and 12 okay. from both sides. What does that leave you with? Um, let's see... That'd be 8 equals uh, 2x, so x would equal 4. That's it. And for the second one, you have 3 over t plus 8 over t minus 5 equals 1. Now, I could add these two things together, mm -hmm. just like I would add fractions. I'd have to find a common denominator, and I could work just on the left side of the equation. Mm -hmm. But there's a better way to do this problem, and that is to multiply both sides of the equation by what my common denominator would have been. Right. What's my common denominator? Uh, 1. No. It, oh, X. No, it's T times T minus 5. That's always oh, your common two. denominator. Let's, let's look at this problem here. If I'm adding 1 half plus 1 third, my common denominator is 2 times 3. Okay. okay. So the common denominator becomes 6. This has to equal 1 half, so this must be 3 sixths. This has to equal 1 third, that's 2 sixths. Now that I have a common denominator, I got 5 sixths. Well, when you have a variable, if I have 1 over x plus 1 over x minus 1, my common denominator is x times x minus 1. Okay. So in the problem we have, the common denominator is going to be t times t minus 5. Okay. Instead, of manip instead of adding these two fractions, I'm going to try to get rid of the denominators in one step. Well, notice that if I multiply both sides of the equation by what would have been my common denominator... I'm going to lose both of these denominators. In other words, when I multiply this times this term here, the t's cancel, and I'm left with 3 times t minus 5. And when I multiply this times this, the t minus 5 cancels, and I'm left with just 8t. On the right side, I've got t times t minus 5, which is t squared minus 5t. Now I don't have any more denominators. Once you've eliminated the denominators from an equation, it's much easier to solve. Right. What's the next thing to eliminate? 
um, you add. Hold on. Uh, Think denominators first, parentheses next. Well, I got a parentheses here. Let's get rid of that. Right. In other words, distribute. I'm confused on how. Wait. Okay. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Um. So then, you would do three t minus fifteen um, plus eight t equals t squared minus five. Yeah. What kind of an equation are we looking at? A quadratic. Yes. And how do you solve a quadratic? Uh, a quadratic formula. No, not yet. We might be able to factor it. But the first step in solving a quadratic is to put zero on one side, everything else on the other. So right. I'm going to leave this t squared because I like the fact that it has a positive coefficient. And I'm going to move everything over here to the right side. Well, that 3t plus 8t is 11t. Mm -hmm. So I would have t squared minus 16t. And then i got to move the number over there, plus 15. And I can factor that. Right. How would t squared minus 16t plus 15 factor? Uh, what? T and t. Yeah. What are the signs? T and t. Um, they're not the same? No, they are the same. They have to be the same. Okay. In order... The only way we could get a plus 15 as the constant is if I have negative negative, which would give me a plus, or positive positive, which would give me a plus. Well, this tells me that it has to be negative negative. Okay, that's what I meant. And now I want and what? Now what? Factors of that do what? Uh, that multiply. No, factors of 15 that add, because of that plus, to the number 16. That's all. Okay. Factors of 15 that add to 16. Not to negative 16, to 16. Well, what are factors of 15 that add to 16? Um, 15 and 1. <clears throat> So your two answers are t equals 15 and t equals 1. Okay. You said there was a third problem. You want to verbalize it? Uh, yeah. So it is uh, 6 over x minus 2 plus... 2 over x plus 2 equals 5 over x squared minus 4. What can I multiply both sides of the equation by to lose all three denominators in one step? Mm. Wouldn't you want to do x uh, x I don't yeah, know <laughs> x squared minus 4 in other okay. words x squared minus 4 first of all factors into what x minus Four 2 times x plus 2 okay so now we can see that if we multiply both sides of the equation by that I'm going to lose this entire denominator and I'm going to lose this denominator and this denominator. And I have to multiply every term 
by this. So x minus 2 times x plus 2 times the left side of the equation. The right side of the equation, x minus 2 times x plus 2. What does this give me when I multiply this times that? You get... Uh, okay, so the bottoms cancel out. Well, the x minus 2's cancel. I still got this x plus 2. Oh, so it would be x plus 2 on the bottom. No, we're, we're doing this so that we can rid ourselves of all the denominators in one step. In other words, if I multiply the left side of the equation by this, this term becomes x plus 2 times 6. Right. No denominator. The denominator got canceled out. Now when I multiply this by this term over here, the x plus 2 gets canceled out, and I'm left with mm -hmm. just the x minus 2 in the numerator. And on the right side, everything gets canceled out, and I'm left with just 5. And notice how much easier the equation is at this point to solve. It's no mm -hmm. longer difficult. They would never give you this equation on a test at your level. Too easy. That's why okay. when you have an equation that has a bunch of different denominators, if you can find something to multiply both sides of the equation by that gets rid of all denominators in one step like we just did, that's what you want to do. Rather than going through the math of adding these two things using a common denominator. Okay. Okay, now the rest of it, what's the next step? So it would be... Six. Always remember those two steps. That's almost always the first two things you want to do on any equation. Get rid of denominators, get rid of parentheses. Right. So then it would become 6x plus 12 plus 2x minus 4 equals 5. Okay. Gather all your x's on one side, all your numbers on another. <clears throat> okay, so it would be 8x um, and then equals... Uh, let's see, 12. Yeah, do the numbers on the left side. So you get 12 minus 4, so we have a plus 8 on the left. Mm -hmm. We've got to subtract 8 from both sides. 5 minus 8 is what? Um, that is negative 3. And then finally, the last step, which is almost always the same last step, divide by the coefficient of x. Right. So x equals minus 3 eighths. Okay. Okay. And when you see a problem like this, you know that there must be something special going on. In other words, they didn't give it to us in the simple format. They gave it the right side had already been multiplied together. In other words, they gave it right. to us like this. Well, it doesn't look like we have the same three denominators, but we kind of do. They're all related. Since this factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2, well, that would be a common denominator for these two terms. x minus 2 times x plus 2. So I realize instantly that if I multiply by this, I'm going to get rid of all three denominators in one step. And any problem you get is going to be like that. They're not going to give you a problem that looks like this. Okay? Because you couldn't solve it easily. It's only because this is x squared minus 4, which factors into x minus 2 times x plus 2, that we can do it easily. I mean, I could still solve it if it was x squared minus 5, but it wouldn't be solved so easily as this one is. Right, okay.
Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, another example. Let me just give you a, an example of another one here, and let me see. Make sure you understand it. See the similarities? Yeah. This factors in the x minus 1 times x plus 1. So that's yeah. when I, first of all, I'm going to factor it so that I see that. And now second of all, I can see that if I multiply every term in my equation by that product, I will lose that denominator, I will lose that denominator, and I will lose that denominator. Okay. Yeah, okay. We were just doing some problems in that or on that in class. So that makes more sense. I wasn't getting it at first. Yeah. Usually when you see something that can be factored, you probably should factor. Not always, but a lot of times. In other words, right. when we saw x squared minus 4, our first step should be to factor that. Right. x minus 2 times x plus 2, then we see that, ah, that's what's on the other side. I can get rid of everything with multiplying by x squared minus 4. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that's all I have for tonight. Okay. Um, and next week is my last week of school, and since I'm a senior, I don't have to I have tests. Take the final. So <laughs> this is the last test that I have. Okay. So this is probably going to be our last session, at least while you're in high school, huh? Yeah. Um. Looks about it, okay. yeah. So when do you head out? You're going to school in California, aren't you? Yes, sir. So when do you go out there? I am. Pardon? When do you head out there for college? Um, Not to... Kind of like, well, I start school on the 24th of August. Okay. So I'm moving out like a week before that, so kind of around like the 19th, 18th cool. kind of deal. You're going to live in a dorm or with relatives or? It's kind of like, um, I guess, more of what you could say is um, an apartment kind of dorm room looking thing. Okay. It's, it's actually pretty cool. Or I might get my own apartment. Um, we got to work out the numbers and see what works best. Yeah, I know when I went to school, most people stayed on campus the first year. And then after the first year I moved, I lived in apartments every year after that. But Yeah. I mean, the apartments are kind of cheaper, so... Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see what we end up doing. Yeah. Well, it's it's, exciting. it's so, an exciting time in your life. You should uh, you should enjoy it. Do you know what you're going to study yet? Um, not yet. I was kind of thinking about kind of going into some kind of law, but I'm not exactly sure quite yet. Okay. They're probably going to make you take something called the math placement exam. Yeah, I already took those. Oh, you did? Okay. I got placed. Yeah, I got placed in a little bit of a lower math class, but they said I could move up it, depending on how easy it is for me. So okay. I'm, work, I'm working not, with I'm a senior now that has the practice stuff for the MPEs, and we're going through it. It's mainly just algebra, geometry, and trig uh, yeah. is all it is. But if you need yeah. help like, on any of that you know where to find me. In other words, just because okay. you're in California, if you still have math classes that you need help on, we can still work just okay. as easily as you being two miles away. <laughs> I will definitely notify you if I need some help. All right. Aaron, good luck to you. It's been a pleasure working um, with you for three years, yeah. two years. We've been working three years almost. Yeah, I think I've yeah, been working with you when you were a sophomore, I think. So, yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> so cool. So. Yeah. Um, I will keep in touch with you um, for the next coming school year, but I guess I'm done for this year. Yeah. You probably are saying you hope you're done with me. 
<laughs> no, uh, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. You helped me out. Oh, but I mean, I, you probably don't want to take any more math. Is what I'm uh, saying. But uh, you may find yourself <laughs> having to take some more math. Not not because of your yeah. skills, just because whatever you study might involve some math and yeah. college math. So um, if you need help, give me a call. I will definitely do that. Okay, Taryn. Well, good luck to you. And Thank you. Enjoy college. All right. I will. Bye-bye. Right,